Grand Canyon. This huge structure is over 277 miles long and up to 18 miles wide, carved by the Colorado River millions of years ago. This massive structure is a... Wait a minute. The Grand Canyon wasn't formed over millions of years. Jessica, what are you doing? You don't know what you're talking about. Now be quiet. I'm trying to make a documentary. But it's true. Creation makes a lot more sense. That's why I'm here, to make sure you tell the true story. Come on. Every honest scientist knows that the Grand Canyon had to take millions and millions of years to form. Now if you would please be quiet so I can move on to my next point. The limestone found on the upper rim is around 230 million years old. And... Wait a minute! now? You said no. So, you've observed these changes take place over millions of years? Well, no. Then these honest scientists throughout history have documented proof of long erosion from the Colorado River? Not exactly. Do you have a witness who is actually there? Of course not. Well then, Frank, how do you know for certain you're right? Someone was there when the world began, and he wrote it all down for us in a book. The Bible. <laughs> I should have known that you tried to pull that one off, Jessica. Everyone knows that the Bible is just a bunch of fairy tales. Besides, we are the best witness of all. Science. Now, could you please go? The Bible is what we need to rely on, and its author is the creator of everything we see around us. But no one has proof of God. I mean, how could he be without beginning? To answer your first question, there is a very simple answer that almost every scientist misses. Really? Yep. So, have you ever looked at a building or car and said, This took millions of years to form? No. That would be ridiculous. What about a painting? Or a sketch? Of course not. Maybe a computer? Uh, no. What about a human? Oh, I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to prove that God created everything. Am I right? All I'm trying to show you is that if you look at the evolutionary worldview, it is totally insane. There is no possible way that nothing exploded into everything. I believe that if there is a design, there had to be a designer. Well... Okay, I guess I can see where you're coming from, but science can explain things much better. And you believe that science proves your theory of a big bang of molecules just happened to put in thousands of galaxies, including the Milky Way galaxy, and just happened to put eight planets in perfect orbit around the sun, and there just happened to be one planet that could support life because of its perfect distance from the sun, and it just happened to slowly evolve animals and just happened to form man. Me and the rest of the world? <sighs> I'd like to invite a little friend of mine to join the conversation. Let me at him! <clears throat> I mean, sure. Meet Jerry. Hi. Jerry is an omnis. An omma what? Hey, it means the person who is open to all beliefs. Oh. Is that your belief? What else? We are both going to try to convince Jerry of our point of view, but we have to use only evidence from the Grand Canyon. Bring it on. There's a lot of evidence for evolution at the Grand Canyon alone. Why don't you go first? Okay. <clears throat> you see, Jerry, the formation of the Grand Canyon began millions of years ago, but it didn't start with erosion. Over a long period of time, when the land was in different stages, sediment was laid down layer after layer. 
The earth then shifted and the Colorado River began to wear away the ground. Little by little, it washed away sediment, slowly deepening the canyon. Finally, after years and years of erosion, the river and its branches formed this massive canyon. Wow! See? He's already fascinated with my viewpoint. Are there any further questions before I move on, Jerry? Just one. And that would be... Prove it. <laughs> I think that was more of a statement. Anyway, I would be more than happy to enlighten a poor soul who doesn't know the truth. Cool! I think. Wait a minute. Your so-called truth is based on theories, not facts. <laughs> Come now. <laughs> All scientists agree that the universe was formed uh, 4.54 billion years ago. <laughs> but do you have evidence for this? Well, as a matter of fact, the Grand Canyon has some of the best evidence for evolution. Like what? Well, for starters, the rocks at the Grand Canyon are dated just as we expect them to be. Dated using radiometric dating? <clears throat> uh, yes, that is the method that most scientists use. <clears throat> but radiometric dating has been proven to be unreliable. It has dated rocks to be millions of years old when people know that they were recently formed. And it's also dated rocks from lower down in the Grand Canyon's layers to be newer than some rocks in the layers above. Yes, but... If that's the method you're basing your evidence on, then you can be sure that it's not correct. But we have more than just radiometric dating. <laughs> we have many other proofs. Like the Colorado River. Uh, exactly. Given enough time, it definitely could have carved the canyon. But you're assuming that there was a long period of time for that to happen. Like I said before, all scientists agree on how and what formed the Grand Canyon. But we shouldn't rely on what the majority of scientists think. We should rely on the truth of God's word, which tells us that the earth is only about 6,000 years old. After man sinned, God separated himself from man. Later, we got so sinful that God caused a worldwide flood, and Noah and his family were the only ones that survived. Okay, <clears throat> listen. We base evolution on science, not fairy tales. Anything that takes faith to believe shouldn't be taught as science. Like I always say, seeing is believing. So if you haven't observed actual changes that take place in animals and you weren't there when the Grand Canyon was formed, then what do you base your belief on? On the ever-changing- It has to be faith. Both of our theories are religion, and both take faith to believe. As I have said before, we don't base our beliefs merely on faith. We use real evidence to support it, like fossils. And how do you date those fossils? Well, <clears throat> when they are in a certain layer of the rock, uh, naturally, they are from that specific time frame. But we just determined that your method of dating rocks is unreliable. Therefore, it can't be trusted to date rocks, and the rocks, in turn, shouldn't be used to date anything, including fossils. Yes, but we have many other- Speaking of fossils, we know that in order to become fossilized, an organism has to be buried quickly after it dies, otherwise it will decay or be eaten. Normally, animals do decay or get eaten, and are rarely covered quickly enough to become a fossil. But yet we find thousands of fossils worldwide. This could only be the result of a massive flood. Interesting. What else do you have? 
Well, let's go back to the Grand Canyon. Some of the layers found there are bent. If they were deposited millions of years apart, some of the layers would have been hard and would have cracked when they were bent. But we don't see that. What we do see is evidence that the layers were all soft enough to be bent at that time. A worldwide flood would have deposited the layers quickly and then bent them before they had time to dry. Also, we see evidence of water in some of the layers. Well, that's one thing I agree with. Millions of years ago, there was an ocean that stretched across this rather flat plain before it became a canyon. But after millions of years, it became a desert and left behind many fossils and rivers, including the Colorado River, which in turn slowly carved the Grand Canyon. The fossils occurring in the deposits from the ocean indicate that the topmost layers are at least 250 million years old and represent life forms that do not exist today. The limestone was formed by a slow deposit of microscopic marine creatures. There is absolutely no way these creatures could have laid down deposits hundreds of feet thick in the small time period of the Genesis Flood. Right, Jerry? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, sure. I'm sorry, but I totally disagree. If there were millions of years between the layers, we would see each layer having a different pattern of cracks. This is because they would be millions of years apart, and were, according to evolutionists, formed at different times. Instead of seeing these buried faults, we see that some cracks even extend to the layers above or below them. And as for the fossils, fast-moving water is indicated by some of the Grand Canyon's fossils as being present when they were covered. The fossil layers couldn't have been formed gradually over millions of years, as evolutionists claim. Oh, come now. If an ocean ran through that area, and if a fast-moving current went through, it could have washed away thousands of marine animals. Or uh, if a giant tsunami came through, it could have rapidly buried uh, hundreds of fish or other animals. That's a lot of ifs. <laughs> Exactly. Most evolutionists won't admit it, but their theory, and I do mean theory, is based off of assumptions. This means that we should treat it like a theory until we find proof for evolution and not teach it in public schools as if it's a proven fact. Like I told you before, we have many proofs. I mean, come on. The Grand Canyon is massive. There's absolutely no way that it could have been carved in a small amount of time. Oh, really? Well, we see examples of mini Grand Canyons popping up all over the world from small local floods. There's a report of a flood in England that made a small canyon and another report of a similar canyon formed in Texas. Also, we have the Little Grand Canyon at Mount St. Helens. When it erupted, it caused all the melted snow and ice to flow rapidly downhill, creating a canyon. If all these canyons were formed in just a few days with a small amount of water, why is it so strange that a huge canyon was carved by a massive worldwide flood? Well, <clears throat> yes, we do see small canyons in some places in the world, but that doesn't necessarily prove your theory. I mean, you weren't there when it happened. How do you know that was how it formed? You see, Jerry, we have to base evolution on real science. Real science, huh? I'd like to know why many evolutionary scientists believe that the massive canyons we find on Mars were formed by a huge catastrophic flood. After all, the only traces of water we find there are small amounts of ice. Also, if that's what many scientists believe, why would it be so crazy to believe that the Grand Canyon here on Earth was formed by a huge flood? We have a much bigger supply of water than Mars. Over 70% of our planet is covered in it. Ooh, tough one. The reason we believe those canyons on Mars were carved by a flood is because we find evidence that there was a flood. So you're going to believe that those canyons were carved by floods on a planet that has only traces of ice, but you're not going to believe that the Grand Canyon was carved by a flood? That sounds like you have faith that the flood on Mars was real, but you're refusing to face the facts about the Grand Canyon. Wait, but I thought that evolutionists only based their theories on facts. We do. Uh, you do? Yes, we do. And I've already named some. Like using radiometric dating to date rocks when that method has been proven wrong? Well, we may be wrong on 
on that part, but... It would be interesting to hear some of the evolutionist proofs, since I've already heard the creationist side. Of course, Jerry. You see, our DNA is always changing, and... Wait a minute. We agreed to only use evidence from the Grand Canyon, remember? <clears throat> yeah, yes, I remember. So, what are some evolutionary proofs at the Grand Canyon? Besides dating the rocks, I mean. Like I have already said, the fossils are dated from the time periods that we expect them to. But we already confirmed that your method of dating is unreliable. Well, I... Uh, <clears throat> I... Uh, I have many other proofs for evolution that are too numerous to mention today. I see. Well, I think we'd better wrap it up now. Jerry, you've seen that we can't trust the evolutionary theory. Even though it's taught as if it has already been proven, there is actually very little evidence for it. We have to rely on God and his word, because he was the only one who was there when the world began. Well, Jerry, I must say it's been a pleasure to show you the truth of science. Uh, thanks. I would say the same thing, Jerry, but it all comes down to faith. Both creationists and evolutionists are basing their theories on faith. It's just a matter of whether we are trusting in a false view that actually has very little evidence, or in a view that has many pieces of supporting proof and relies on the God who created this world. I hope that you will come to realize the truth, Jerry. Thanks, guys. This has been a very interesting experience. I'll definitely think about what both of you have said. I just want to leave you with one last thing, Jerry. The reason why so many people believe evolution is not because it's real science, because it's not. They believe it because they want to come up with another solution other than God. If they admit that God created the world, then they would be admitting that he has the authority to tell them what to do. People are stubborn and prideful and don't want someone else giving them rules to obey, so they made up another view that avoids God. That's what evolution is about, avoiding God but they will find that it's impossible to avoid him forever. One day, he is going to judge the world, and evolutionists will not be found innocent. Put your faith in Jesus now and bow before him, because one day the whole world will bow down in fear at his judgment. So don't wait until it's too late to make this choice. Turn away from the lies of man and turn to the truth of Christ. <laughs>